Hey, I'm Charlie. This is Athena. Welcome to Raise Up uh, Podcast. Yes, welcome to the Raise Up Podcast. We are so excited to uh, come to you today to talk about a a really important topic with business owners. And uh, I don't think it gets enough exposure. And it's really like, how do I find clarity in the path forward? And I think that this is an area where there's a lot of people who are constantly asking the question, how do I know if this is the right thing to do? How do I know what I should be getting into? It, how, how do I know? How do I get clear? And so we wanted to share with you some ideas and some techniques that we've used or that we currently use to get clear about decision making. And so, um, Charlie, you want to take it away? Yeah, you know, I mean, Clarity comes over time sometimes too. And some people have a little bit more clarity than others. I I truly believe. I think some people have direction and sometimes, I don't know if our direction was always the right direction or it was the right direction then. So I really look at now as like, we get so much information. There's so much data that comes at us now that we can really make more clear defined decisions that we're doing now because we have so much data. I mean, back in the day, we didn't have uh, the trip counts. We didn't have as many things as going, it was all manually done. So now- Clipboards (laughs) on a wall. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) this wall would be full of clipboards with everybody's trips on it and their names would be on it and you'd have to look through each one of them. So, you know, and this is just on the transportation side, doing the limo sites. Cause you know, back in the day, we were just more of a limo company before we got into doing more group transportations, more airline transportation, things like that. So, you know, really looking back on that, you know, we had the best technology we thought we we were doing back in there. We really thought we were above the idea of having the clipboards, even the old wood ones. And then we went to more of the clear ones. We, We really tried to up our game all the time. But now we're so fortunate in so many different ways because we can have real lifetime data of how much time we spend on trips, where we're going, what's available driver, it's closest. There's so much more data that we can use now in everything that we're doing. The way that we map out bags when we do bag deliveries. Now we can have a map that shows the seven different deliveries going in a row where we're not back back backpedaling where we're used to. I mean, we used to think this was the fastest route and we'd pass two locations to go back to the other two locations. So well back in the day we had map books. Map books. And we didn't have Don't copy them. Let me tell you because there's a copy written thing on there. Somebody will call you and tell you about that. Well map books became obsolete when Google Maps came about and and then there was MapQuest and so Well and then all the just the GPS I mean that was so convenient. I remember putting GPSs in every one of our limos back in the day too. So yeah, I mean, we have such a world of data. And then, you know, asking questions to your friends and and like-minded other people is really, I think, uh, our 2020 groups and everything that we've been doing this. We have friends here in town that we talk to that we combine in. There is just so much ways that you can do it because there's so many different things. Sometimes people ask you and you have things like it's a great idea. And then when you really look at it and boil it down, it's not such a great idea. And sometimes it just takes you somebody saying, hey, you know, do you need four more vehicles? Do you need four yeah. more motor coaches? Do you need those? Oh, they're such a great deal. You know, they're always such there. I'm never going to get this deal again. I, I, I just had one of our managers today call me and we've been trying to get a Lucas. We're getting a Lucas for a CPR machine for patients. We've been doing CPR on the back of the ambulances and a Lucas would really be there good. And he's like, Charlie, if we buy one again today, if we buy both of them, they're $10,000 for a re Furbus Lucas, we can get both of them for the same price. This deal will never come again. And I just said, right, we need one right now. And I don't need another one to sit on the shelf. And I appreciate that, but there's always a deal to be had somewhere down the line. And we just have to figure out what that deal looks like and what our needs are for today. Um, I can buy that thing. You can sit on the shelf for six months and we might need it, but I'd rather just buy it when we need it and make more of an educated decision, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and for me, how... I think clarity starts is you and have Roy, to... I'm not throwing you in the bus, I promise you. I, I'm just making this as an appointment because it just happened a, a few hours ago. And, and Roy understood the thing, so I apologize. Yeah, no, I think for me, clarity starts with myself and it's getting, not being in a place of busyness. It's kind of being in a place of stillness, but then also clarity comes with the food that I eat. One of the things that I realized quite some time ago was I started to lose my memory and I was feeling like, gosh, I was having to write down things that I never had to write before. And being somebody that really comes from a place of like valuing organization, I had to come to this like 
space of, whoa, like I am not remembering people's names. I'm not remembering certain things. I have to write everything down to just ensure that I don't let something slip through. And I was talking to some of my friends and they're just like, oh, we're just getting older and that's just how it is. And my response to that was, I don't accept that. There's something physiologically going on with me. And just because I've gone over 40 now, I, I just don't accept that. And so um, the, the long, the short story is that I started just diving into what, what foods could be creating brain fog and discovered that gluten um, could have been a possibility. And so I went on a 30 day gluten fast where as much as it was up to me, uh, I, I went gluten free and my memory started to return and I just could not believe the incredible uh, change that happened within me. Like there's no piece of bread on the planet that's ever going to be worth that to me. And I had, I just, up until then, I just didn't realize how intense the food that we put in our bodies, how it affects our brain. And um, that was a fundamental like learning moment for me once I discovered how gluten affected my brain and my body. And so I feel like after that, I became way more clear than I ever had been because I didn't have that fogginess. And it didn't feel like a fogginess, like you were on the influence of something. It just felt like you just weren't as sharp, I guess. And so starting there, especially if you're feeling like you're constantly not able to pay attention or there's things going on with you physiologically that you're just not able to like get around your organizational piece in your business or or in your life there's probably something going on with your diet that you need to look at and it could be a food sensitivity it could be a flat out allergy but that's where i think you need to start and you need to make sure you're having good sleep because that's another thing when we're fatigued we're not thinking straight and so how can you possibly be clear when you your your brain is still racing so once that foundation hits then you start going towards the numbers, I think, personally, is looking at the data. And then you're able to filter through the data with a clearer mind than, than, than otherwise. And if you need to go beyond the data to get opinions from other people who've been there and done that, like I feel like these are absolutely tried and true like places to go to get clear. And, and if you're still like a question that I used to ask Charlie sometimes, cause he tends to move quickly, uh, when he's really working a puzzle to get things done is I'll ask him, can you explain that to me in another way? Because I'll feel like my brain is not quite clicking into the, the vision that he has. And so it's like asking those curious questions. Can you explain that in a different way that maybe I can receive it some other, some other direction? So. And I think I think it's taken even further back. Um, I didn't talk about the health part of it because I was thinking we're just decision making. But she's one hundred percent correct. Um, as you guys will see through my journey of we've been doing this, and now almost eight nine months, I have been on a um, a healthier kick in life, a, a lifestyle change. I want to say it. I, I don't call it a diet by any means. Now, I think diets are set up for failures, and I, I think the word diet says it is because it tells you it's like a temporary thing. And I think. People have told me this forever and told me that, you know, it's a, it's a lifestyle change. And it truly is. I mean, it's, I choose not to eat one body. I allow myself so much oh, that I can eat per day. And if I eat over a little bit, I'm okay with it because I know that I'm trying to keep within those boundaries. But I try to keep myself in a 12 to 1400, hour, 1400 calorie a day uh, diet or diet, excuse me, I use that word, a life change. And I try to keep those calorie counts in there because I know that's when I function the best. So the food that I put in my, inside myself, and she says gluten, I, I have not gotten rid of the gluten things, but I tell you what, in my, where I'm at now and where I was at before mm -hmm. is completely different. I don't feel the tiredness. I am up cleaning the kitchen. I am up doing laundry. I'm up helping around the household things where I didn't do as much of that stuff. I am more here at the shop. I'll, I'll put four or five miles on easier, not ever be winded, not be there, run up and down the stairs, do it on this house. Our new lake house that we bought has like eight sets of stairs going up and down it. And I'm running up and down the whole entire yeah. things. I'm not winded. I don't think my knees like it near as much, but I'm telling you, I feel the most clear headed I've been and I'm eating high proteins. I mean, a little bit of carbs, you're I, eating I mean, organic food. Well, yeah, organic. Okay, so let me explain organic. 
I thought my wife was trying to feed me some woo-woo food and realized it just, it just wasn't pesticides and other junk into it. Because when you hear organic, it, it kind of makes me think like, um, it was my own thoughts what organic was at. But it, it has been healthier. It's been better. I'm not so much on the organic hamburger so much, but I definitely love the organic chicken. I love the, the vegetables. Everything else is really good. Um, but in the clarity that my mind is, and when I talk, I don't feel like I'm searching for words. I feel like I, it's right at the tip of my tongue. I feel like I can talk intelligently about some things and I don't feel fogged. And when she says the fog, I think of a windshield that you have a perfectly good windshield in front of you and there's no yeah. cracks, there's no breaks. But when it's dirty, it's not. Same with our, our glasses. I, I, I'm a particular about my glasses all the time. I always carry one of those towels because over just over the last four or five years, I started having to work in glasses. And I do think age does a pit in all of us, in our eyes, our knees, our body wear, everything that we're doing, even some of the fogginess. But we can help by cleaning our glasses. And what our cleaning our glasses is, is eating better and healthier food. And I felt the best I have, and I am gonna be 56 this year, so I feel the best that I have in the last 20 years. So, I mean, the clarity and everything that I have, even in the meetings when we're talking to people, it's just like, hey, we can do this. This is not the way you can do it. You can rewrite your story. You can redo things in a different way. And it doesn't have to be this, this gloom and doom. And I feel like I was in such an area of that for so much of my life. Like, oh my God, I can't believe this person called me sick. Now I'm gonna be here or there. We got another accident or they broke the doors after we told them not to do it. Now you can take it in stride and say, I know realize things are gonna happen and I can just reduce the amount of doing this happening by putting some steps inside there and yeah. just being more clear in the direction I wanna give our team, our, our kids, our family, my, my relationship with my wife is just much better. I mean, everything is just much better. And it really just took a few intentionality things to do is, is basically eating better foods and just getting some outside direction. And I think that has helped. Then the outside direction and clarity as we talk about and making decisions is sometimes it's outside your circle group of people too. Sometimes it's a perfectly stranger that you meet that we go to some of these outside uh, uh, lessons, some things that we go to that we can learn some things outside and they teach you some things that give you clarity. And then all of a sudden you come back and like the rewrite the story. I've used that so many different times in so many different ways and with friends of ours and people that we're doing things with, like it is real. It is a hundred percent real that you can take a negative outcome and make such a positive spin onto it. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but my identity was, 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 uh, was, what, what's the word I'm looking for? We're going to talk about that. Oh, that's later. another thing. I'm sorry. So anything, some other things have happened to us and we just realized that what we've done in our life, we can spin that story and try to help other people not happen to it. Like we can talk to them, give them bullet points. If this ever happens, here's what you need to do. So what was your old story and what's your new story then? In what, what, what so like your format? old story was I was a guy that was X amount of pounds and like what oh, was the old geez. story that you you were telling yourself? And uh, I mean, if you go back way, way back when we had our first weight loss that we did, I mean, I was up to 454 pounds. I mean, I was a big guy. I was spare. And now I'm sitting right in the like a 282 right now, 283 um, in pounds. Uh, I, I lost all that weight and I got down to about two. 280, 285, and then um, then you know just stress and life and things gone up, and I just wasn't watching what I was doing. I had the program, I knew what I needed to do, but you kind of get off the program. So then I got myself back up to like 358, and I sat at that thing. And it's funny, we were looking through old photos the other day, and I'm like, oh my word, why did I let myself in that in that realm of my life that's so unhealthy? There's so many things. I had to have a knee replacement because of it. I mean, there was other things that caused that too, but um, anyways, it was just me being a little fogged and figured I was in my own my own shit. I was like trying to live my own life and trying to figure it out and the stress of the business and stress of other things just kind of just got me and I just realized that I don't have to have those stresses anymore. I, those things are not me anymore. I don't have to have that stress. Don't get me wrong. If some things go wrong and I get spun up a little bit and I, I call it the old Charlie mode. I kind of get in the old Charlie mode. I'll have to apologize to my wife because she'll ask me some irritating things and I'll spin off real quick. But then I'm like, what am I doing? Stop. This is not me. I can rewrite this. And I just immediately apologize and say, hey, I'm so sorry that happened. And she's forgiving. And sometimes my wife will get into one of her, uh, her moments. And I realize that we all have our moments and our time. It just doesn't have to be the whole time. We can turn that around. We, if we're starting to have a bad day, we can turn that around really quickly by one of us just apologizing and just say, Hey, can we just do a reset? That's the difference of my clarity now is my clarity doesn't have to be a, a four day event of us getting mm -hmm. upset with each other. It could be a one hour event. It could be a 15 minute event. It could be no event. 
And uh, I, I think we see that difference with our children now. Our children are way differently in the way that we are after them. We're not so snappful to them. We're not so more. We explain things more to them in there. And I think the clarity of our decisions that we're doing now for our life has definitely trickled down to our employees, our kids, our family, our friends. I think that it has been a, a, a lifelong decision and change. Yeah. And, and I see so many people are coming up and saying, things are so different, what's going on? And then we kind of tell them about some of the groups we're going to, Danny Morrow, well, things like that. Well, you know, part of it is you can, you can go to places and you can hear information, but it's like you've made a decision to be open to it now. You have to be able to receive it. We can That's listen to That's the piece. My wife listened to 50 podcasts and I'll listen to about 10 minutes of that. I'm like, well, this is not for me. And, but I want her to be able to get fed, so I'll let her do it. But when I went to somewhere and I looked at it was there, I had such a wide open canvas. Like I was a fresh painting. I'm like, I'm going to receive everything here. And I had to really tell myself that because there was some woo-woo stuff that came out of it. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to take the nuggets out of this and all the stuff I believe. And then as you go to more of these things and you see more of it, it becomes more clear. Like, yeah. like it really does. Like you can have a foggy, horrible, foggy day and then the sun breaks out and it starts to burn that fog away and all of a sudden it turns into a beautiful day. And I can tell you that eating the right foods, making the right decisions, feeling good about your decisions, no regrets about your decisions. And I think that's one of the biggest things that as I, I make a decision and I don't regret it, like shit, I should have I went the other way or I flipped a coin and I should have said heads and it turned to be tails. Like, I flipped the coin and I'm confident that tails is the number. And if it's not, then I was okay with that decision. I mean, I was, yeah. I was okay with it. And it was the best educated decision I gave at that time. And I, I feel really strong about it. So don't get me wrong. I am not right all the time. I just feel good in who I am and what I'm going and where I'm doing. And I feel good about my journey. I'm only like 40 pounds, 45 pounds from my goal of weight loss. And that is my goal that I set myself, which was a, a very aggressive goal. In the beginning, because it was a hundred and something pounds to lose. And in nine months, I've been very conscious of what, about what I'm eating. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because we'll make some food. And like my kid came home with six, what were those things? that Cannolis. Cannolis yesterday. I'm like, what, what, what the hell are you thinking? You bring this shit home. He's like, I'm only going to eat one or two and I'm going to give the rest to Audra. I'm like, she doesn't need this stuff either. She's like, well, we're going to bring to grandma. And we're going to bring to the staff. And I'm like, well, very kind of you guys in thinking that yes. stuff. But that's not even stuff that we're trying to bring into the household now because it's not because of temptation. It's just like, we don't need that kind of stuff inside the houses. We have more vegetables. We have more avocados. We have some fruit. We have some very healthy things. I think I made a, a, a bowl of rice last night and I was like, wow, we haven't done that forever. But a bowl of a, 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 a steam thing of rice would be a normal thing in our place with some eggs and whatever else we're going to put yeah. into it. It's not horrible that rice is. It's just how much you take into it and what how that often does you it. eat it. Yeah, and, and and don't get me wrong, I love my noodles, man. Like the other day, I went to the fair and I ordered some faux soup and I just asked them to put extra vegetables. <laughs> and I really miss the noodle part of it in there because I love my noodles. But once in a while, I'll make myself a, a ramen bowl or a, a kimchi bowl or something like that, and I usually get through about a quarter of it, half of it. I'm like, ugh, this is making me sick. But it's my mind saying I crave something. And it's okay for me to have it because that bowl is 370 calories. Yeah. So I know that if I eat that whole bowl, I've, I've taken in one third of my content of the food for the day. And that's okay because my my sushi roll I had earlier was 350 calories. So I know that I'm only within that seven or 800 right. calorie. But uh, I'm not starving. And everybody's like, I don't know how you can do it. You can do it. You can do anything you really put your mind to. And that's the thing I think we're trying to tell you is like, you can really, the, the 3,000 or 5,000 calories we take in a day is crazy and when the people they said oh do you uh, when we go over to thailand and go to other places you guys way overeat you guys have so much stuff and it's so horrible and all the contents in it and then when you really look at what the contents of the food is you're like am i putting this in my body it kind of reminded me when we we're in the fire department and they showed us how uh crack cocaine made, was made and all the different things that was inside oh yeah so it wasn't meth. crack me, it was meth. meth because when you go into a fire scene you need to be able to identify whether or not it's you're walking situation. into a hazmat situation because of what they use to cook meth so that they were using heat and matches and all this different thing antifreeze at, antifreeze yeah, no no antifreeze uh heat but it was just all this thing that broke it down to make it where it was and i'm like People are ingesting that into their body. All these things that are chemicals, flares, all the different yeah. things that was inside there. I'm thinking to myself, holy moly, but when you look at the ingredients you're putting in food, and listen, we're not getting sponsored by anybody about food here. It's just pretty incredible that if there's only four or five ingredients, they should all be fresh stuff that you can get from Mother Earth, where you can get things from here. 
and uh, it's not it, it bleached out flour. It's not all these other things. There's so many other ways you can do it. And it might not taste the same as your mom's pasta from Italy or from right. Italian, or you go to these great Italian foods, but there is substitutes. You can make it that still tastes pretty good. It tastes good. pretty good. And it's not as greasy or as thick or as creamy, but and the you don't feel flavor so loaded is good. afterwards. You don't feel so loaded. Yes, you it's don't feel the so... feeling after you eat it that makes all the difference. And when we eat now, I don't feel like I need to go take a nap because I've ingested 3,000 calories of whatever. Yeah. If I, we go to eat a hamburger, we just don't get it without a bun. We get it with lettuce on there. And I actually like it better than the bun because the bun is there. But don't get me wrong. I go to Double Muskie and they have some of those jalapeno rolls. I got to eat at least half of those jalapeno rolls because it's so good. Or if there's chips at the table and we go to a Mexican restaurant and we do tortilla chips, I'll eat some chips. I'll eat some salsa there. I just kind of count in what that's going to take for me. Yeah. But, and, you know, I think that that's been a really powerful piece for you is what are you eating? Because if your energy is low, then what you're emitting out to everyone else is low as well. And so then you're kind of perpetuating this environment of low energy. And then that sinks you into other areas. So, I mean, food is a big deal. And the decisions that you make, that you put inside your body is a really big deal. And, you know, going, stepping into that, our daughter, she's been on a huge journey. She's of getting been on a, a journey herself, too. She's yeah. been hitting the gym almost seven days a week, six days a week, five days a week. She's definitely getting momentum in her. She's getting momentum. Uh, she's dropped some weight where she was at, too, because she wants to feel better. You can definitely see that she is definitely turning into a different person. And I think part of that is uh, Athena has been very much on a health kick for so long. But I think when I jumped into it... I don't pretend that I have any influence because I haven't had... Um, a piece of cheese in probably five years. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and, and once she figures out that she can eat cheese again, she might. It, it, it's been that on and off of what it's, dairy um, can have and what not. As your body, cha your body changes over time, and it's like the things that when I start to notice that something is affecting me in an adverse way, I listen to that, and I don't need to have it over and over <laughs> again to like prove to myself that it was actually that. Well, if it's so. something I enjoy super bad, I have to have like a bad experience two or three times <laughs> to make sure that something else didn't cause it. Because I, don't, I would rather like not so lose much. that that one piece I like. And yeah, I still eat cheese. I don't have it, but I don't eat cheese here much. I mean, we used to buy big blocks of cheese and baby goulds and Gouda and yeah. all the different cheeses, the whole variety packs from Costco. I mean, that was our go-to. I mean, cheese crackers, you know, whatever else it is, but. Now I, 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 at Blackstone, I know I'm going to get some shit about yeah, this. I Blackstone. got a Blackstone grill and I cook damn near everything on that Blackstone. I mean, that is our primary cooking, uh, probably 50 or 60% of what we're doing right now is cooking on the Blackstone and zucchini and onions and all the different stuff that we're cooking, chicken, a lot of it. I was a big thigh guy because I like the fattier meat and I like the taste of it. But now when you get a nice uh, organic uh, uh, chicken breast, I butterfly it open. I season yeah, it on both sides. He, he's really perfected the art of cooking chicken. Well, you know, I grew up in Mama O's up here in Alaska, and we did that because that's where a lot of people worked down. They ate food from there, and they, they're, they had a grilled there, but it was always so good and juicy. And now that we've got it down pat, that we can get it nice and juicy. I feel like the barbecue grills, I can't control the temperature as well, and I'm not watching as much, and it's but really the hard to use thicker really... meat. It's harder to gauge what that is, so much easier on the grill, yeah, so... Well, and so I think what we are really conveying to you guys is that lifestyle is everything. It and it's the, it's the decisions that you make about your body, your food. It's the decisions that you make on your daily life. Like one of the things that I really look towards is I would like congruency in all areas of my life. So I'm the same person that's on the podcast that I show up in my marriage and in my relationship with my team or that I, that you see me on the street. It's not, it's not, I'm not a different, different person or I'm not projecting a different personality. And part of that has to do with it's all my lifestyle. And running the business is another facet of my lifestyle. I don't really think that there's such a thing as work-life balance. It's like, this is your lifestyle that's made up of, of different decisions that you make in different facets of your life. And when it comes to understanding really clear where we need to head with the business, the data and the, uh, the, the systems that we use to manage the data, especially as we've grown, like, if it wasn't for the fact that we had uh, certain systems in place, we would not continue to be able to scale. 
And I've always thought of those as um, ask, like I ask myself the question with each level of growth, what new capabilities do we need to obtain in order to manage this well and then continue to grow up? But at the end of the day, when it comes to business decisions, you have to know how much your bills are and how much money you have coming in. Like that has to be something that you know. Otherwise, you, you're, you're not going to get clarity around your business. And I think that's probably a fundamental. You know, and then talking to your partner about it and really, you know, going over the different ideas, especially major purchases or things, small things, it's okay. But, you know, we all trust each other. But yeah, you got to have some information. I mean, why are we buying these new sprinters? Why are we buying these new vehicles? What are we purchasing? Why are we doing it? And does it make sense? You know, yeah. or, or are we just looking for a good deal? And all those educated decisions come from everything we've just talked about. I mean, data, health, food, where we're at, where the employees are at, you know, where it has so many different deciding factors that it's it's pretty cool to be able to dive down into it. But Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I know some of you, if you're in business or you're making financial decisions for a business, you maybe don't have partners that you need to consider. You just get to make the decisions. And so, in those moments where you're like, oh, I don't know if we should do that. Like those, when I, I have a wince that follows a possible decision I have to make, I know that that is a tell for me not to make that decision. Because like Charlie mentioned before, we don't regret, we don't have any regrets. And so if you're wincing or you're thinking, oh, like you don't really wanna do that, then don't do that because you're not in alignment with where you are headed. Or maybe you just don't have all the information in front of you that's going to be able to give you that educated decision. You got to dig a little deeper. And, and this doesn't just go for purchasing. This doesn't go for anything. It goes for hiring. It goes for laying yeah. people off. Uh, if you have to terminate somebody, you want to get all that data in there. It's like, am I making this best decision? Is this the best for the company, for us? Maybe even for the individual. I mean, we've had to let some people go or do some things that says, this is probably not a good work environment for you. This is probably not where you want to be because where you're at in your life, this is not this is not the team effort. We don't align. For. And we don't align. And so all those things, it's, sometimes it's just not just best for them, but it's best for them also. It's not yeah. just us. It's, it's a really great thing. And we want to part ways, always good. Or we want to bring somebody on that's going to be a positive team member on our team that's really going to be that standout person that we're looking to build our team more. I mean, uh, the, we see this as the war room when we talk about this, and I love our sign on this. This is where we do our strategy and our things, but it, it, it's the war. Uh, the, the war is us winning, I guess I, I'd say winning the fight, not the fight. Let me rephrase that. Winning. Um, it's really every it's, day for our team, for us, for everybody. We are here constantly trying to strategize how we can do the best job possible without getting in a war. <laughs> and you know, and I think really the focus with that idea is it's it's we're focused on how can we be better than we were yesterday, not what is Acme Car Service doing down the street and and all of their business. Like it's kind of like you got to mind your own business because part of that clarity piece is not getting off on these tangents about what you think everyone else should be doing. It's like you pay attention to what your game is and things will start working. Yeah. Okay. You can't play defense the whole time. You can't be sitting there worried about what everybody else is doing, what the Jones are doing. And I, I, I used to fall into that whole thing. I'm like, I can't believe this person doesn't have a permit. I can't, these guys don't have chauffeur's licenses. They're undercutting this because it, let them play their game. Whatever's going to happen, they get in an accident down the later and they don't have the proper things or documentation. That's all on them. I, I'm worried about what we're doing and what our team is doing. And if we put negative energy into that, it's never going to be a good outcome for us. I mean, we just need to put the porn in there. And if somebody complains about it, say, hey, you know what? That, that's their game plan. That's not ours. You know? We try to do it. We're very well known and recognized, and we want to be where we're at. Yeah, we're and that's 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 the the clarity that clarity brings. Hey, we're running out of time on this session, but you know we are always here. We have lots of podcasts. Go check them all out. I, I can't yep. remember what number we're on. I know we're in the mid twenties somewhere right Raise now. Raise up podcast. Uh, RaiseUpMindset.com, and uh, we would love if you would like. Share, especially share. Yeah, sure. We are on all the channels, Instagram, Facebook, well. YouTube. We're getting more and more people are starting to share it. And actually, I'm getting some texts and saying, oh, my word, I didn't realize you had that. And we had yep. some very good friends of ours. I sent a picture over and she's like, and you're doing podcasts too? I just saw your podcast. You know, so 
interesting. And, you know, like I said, our gain in this is just to help anybody out there who might need some help on this. And this is kind of fun for us. I First, when Athena brought this idea to me, I'm like, oh, no, this is going to be kind of weird. But now we kind of look forward to them. And there's always great topics that we could talk about. Yeah. And it's just, uh, it flows so fast. So thank you again. See you next time. Bye. Thanks again for joining us on the Raise Up podcast. You can find us at raiseupmindset.com. Our socials link there so you can get anything that you need from Instagram, Facebook, our shorts. You can download the podcast straight from the website. If you're listening on another platform, please like, subscribe, share. We're just getting the word out on really the encouragement and um, propelling the entrepreneurial movement in our communities. Thanks again for listening. We've got something special at the end of our episodes now where it's called the Raise Up Response. This is just a sheet that if you wanna dive deeper, it's got questions, it's got takeaways from the podcast, click the link below and you can request it. It'll take you to our website and find it in your inbox. Thanks again, bye-bye.